Good morning and welcome to my well-being being well series. Uh, this is following um, the interviews that we did last week for Mental Health Awareness Week and this week we're going to be focusing on well-being and being well and the lovely Anita has joined me this morning. Um, so um, welcome Anita. Hi, Anita do, you want, do you just want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Anise Figura and I am um, a project manager by background and I now work with my own company, Fierce Project Management, which is all about empowering women in project management. Fabulous. So uh, do you mind if we get started on the questions? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. brilliant. Okay. So please could you tell us about your mental health journey? Yeah. Um, so really, I... Um, I guess um, I hadn't, well, I suppose I started thinking about mental health um, probably around five, six years ago. It, um, well, I think there are, have been times in my life where it's kind of dipped, but it was um, five, six years ago, I kind of felt like I wanted to, and because of those dips, I felt like I wanted to go and support other people. So I became a Samaritan's volunteer as a way of helping people who were going through those challenges. Yeah. Um, but then I hadn't ever suffered fully, um, you know, a, a clinical um, diagnosis or anything at that point. But it was when I had my baby that um, I got postnatal depression. So yeah. it wasn't straight away. Um, but certainly at the beginning, it was very, I was very exhausted, as you are with a new baby. Yeah. And um he had his own, we had our own challenges around breastfeeding and allergies and, um, you know, not sleeping through the night. He would be up every couple of hours at like the worst points. So I very much felt like I was in a little bubble. It was about yeah. me and him. Yeah. And it was around when he was six months and we start. it was a transition point because we started yeah. talking about food. He'd started crawling really early. Um, but those kind of triggers, I guess, um, and it was also becoming winter, so you know the dark the days were getting darker. Yeah. It was harder to get out of the house. Um, not that it was necessarily easy before, but I really felt like I was going into a low. Um, but at the point, I didn't. At that point, I didn't really realise. Um, yeah. I thought it was like you know tiredness. Yeah. Um, and it was, and I was just feeling a lot of anger as well. Actually, everything outside of our little bubble. Yeah. Um, we had a strong bond, but everything outside of that, I was kind of there was quite a bit of anger and resentment too. And it was in January when, um, so I think this started in around November, but it was in January when yeah. I realised that I was um, really snapping at you know people that were supporting me, yeah. and um, I kind of realised that something's not right here. Yeah. Um, kind of during that point, I couldn't like I really struggled to like even get out of bed in the day. And I would put it down to, well, I've not slept yeah. at, at night, so, you know, I'm going to try and sleep in the day. But I just didn't have that energy to like, yeah. get out of bed, which when you've got a baby who relies on you is really hard, yeah. of course, because <laughs> you have to. Um, but I also was really lucky that I had lots of support around me. So it was in January that I kind of realised that this is more than just, um, you know, new mum tiredness. Yeah. And, um, and then I... Uh, reached out to try to get support I spoke to my yeah. GP and um and that was a massive step like that was the biggest step yeah. admitting it to myself and then reaching out to get support yeah. um like talking to my husband and talking to my mum um I know I remember like other like my brother tried to talk to me at the time and I was just like sh I didn't I wasn't ready to talk about yeah. it yeah um but then I spoke to the GP we spoke about getting counselling and um, we spoke about antidepressants. And yeah. at the time, initially, I said no, but the wait was so long, and I felt like I, I felt like I really needed some support. So I did, yeah, go on them for a, for a period. Um, yeah. But then eventually, the wait list kind of yeah. I, I got through the wait list. I started seeing somebody at Mind, and um, by this point, it was spring. The like the sun started coming out. So all yeah. of those things started making yeah. a difference. Um, I had quite big decisions to make about going back to work. Um, yeah. 
facing a redundancy as well as, and you know I was like I'm not even sure I want to go back um yeah. and I, I hadn't really even been apart from my little one um so all of that of the thought of having to leave him and whether he'd be okay yeah um all playing on my on my mind but um but then as I started seeing mind um uh, the counselor at mind was amazing yeah. and it was very much about taking those small steps and yeah. I think we had about six sessions and right at the beginning um you know it was about the tiniest of steps and I was like I really can't even face these decisions that are coming but they are yeah. right around the corner and by the end I was like okay I I've, I've made a decision and I know what I'm doing so it was yeah. so yeah. you know that was just so powerful yeah yeah good mm. that's great interesting though isn't it you know when um it's so it's so familiar to so many mums when you're kind of in that bubble of maternity leave and when you're trying to make that transition back to work mm. it's quite a huge transition isn't it yeah, uh, and that thought of um you know of leaving leaving your baby mm. I, I remember when I was looking um because after my twins were born I went and looked around. It must have been about twenty nurseries because I didn't, tr the, I, I, I didn't couldn't bear the thought of leaving them mm. because they were so tiny, and they were smaller. You know, when I was going back to work, there was I did talk, take a good period of time off. Mm. They were you know like eleven months old when I went back, yeah. but they were still really small compared to you know other other children at that time. Mm. Wouldn't believe it now, believe me. Um, mm. So, um, but yeah, it was really difficult. I can remember thinking, oh, I can't, they can't go there. Well, they might fall mm. down the stairs or they can't go there. Mm. Well, that's right for her, but that's not right for him. Um, and, it, you know, and it's almost kind of, you know, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? To kind of almost let go and let other and trust others to take care yeah. of some precious. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was. Um, and that was my biggest worry. Like, with, would he be OK? And um and um yeah and I was still breastfeeding even though we were a year um and then I was like well would that be okay like is he gonna you know survive without, without yeah. milk all day and like will I be able to carry on um so yeah it was just and um, it was just all that unknown um yeah. that was quite you know going through my mind and um yeah so it was it was challenging certainly and um, but then when I started going back, so I remember having a conversation with my boss, um, and I was just like, "Well, I'm I'm not coming back. Can I just take my redundancy now, um, like a little bit early, or can we extend it?" And he was just like, "No." <laughs> he very quickly <laughs> said, "No." He needed my help back, and um, and and like I hadn't followed the right process to be able to do that. I would have had to tell them like a lot earlier. Um, so he's like, "No, you do have to come back." But he was so supportive in my transition back that yeah. really helped me yeah. and um and I'm really glad that I did have to go back because it forced yeah. me you know forced me to sort all those things out and realize yeah. okay he's okay without me I yeah. can you know, breastfeed I can pump at work and um yeah. my body will adjust he will adjust and um like he built like so he was with grandparents and like their bond is so amazing and um and and yeah, it was all because I was forced to make that decision. And I knew that I didn't want to stay at home forever. Um, but it was just the the thought that it'd come so quick, even though it'd been a year. Um, yeah. and just yeah, facing it. So yeah. actually having to do it was a lot less scary than the thought yeah. of doing it all. Yeah, I remember going back and actually sitting there and someone had made me a cup of tea and mm. I was sat there drinking this tea thinking this is hot I don't normally have hot tea <laughs> yeah, like sitting and eating your lunch and being like oh I can eat my lunch oh I can eat something <laughs> oh this is really nice <laughs> it was yeah, like the real basic things yeah. it was just like oh this is lovely oh adult conversation oh this is so nice yeah. oh we're talking we're talking you know about other things other than nursery rhymes <laughs> things like that <laughs> It was just like, um, it was like a whole new world. <laughs> yeah, God, and it was really interesting. Yeah, all those small things. But I realised, actually, when I got went back, I realised um, that I was, like, actually, it was so important. Work was so important to me in those adult conversations. Um, 
and it's still like and it always had been but it was like okay I can find a way that I can be both um, yeah. a mum yeah. and work and it actually kind of because I was facing this decision about the redundancy it kind of pushed me to make those decisions um so I decided to leave but for and but it was kind of a big decision at the time because I knew that if I stayed I would have the flexibility which I'd already had kind of pre pre baby yeah. but I knew it was a good organization for that and I worked for a great boss but I knew that I was ready to leave so I had that kind of decision of well do I stay but it felt like it was for the wrong reasons. I was like, well, no, I am, even though I've got a child, that makes, me, if anything, it was making me feel more ambitious. So I was like, I yeah. either stay and get a promotion or I leave. So for that last little chunk of time, I really pushed and I got interview and I had an interview and I nearly got the job internally for a promotion. And what was really interesting was I was like, I've barely had an adult conversation for a year and yet I've done a really good interview. <laughs> so it just made me realize you know it's all possible yeah 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 I I, I remember um it, it resonates about you know you're saying actually it gave you additional additional mm -hmm. driver in terms of having children and mm -hmm. I I would completely agree with that um I would probably I was very ambitious before but I was even mm -hmm. more ambitious yeah um, that's interesting isn't it yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah more driven um yeah. because it was more important to get mm. more security for my family so that yeah. we could do nice things yeah interesting so um just another question then so what does mm. well being or being well mean to you um so i think well-being to me means looking after well i think it means looking after myself and yeah. knowing um knowing the things that will help me um yeah. So I don't feel fall into that that depression again, and I know that I know that certainly some of the things around lockdown have felt have felt that kind of at certain times that up and down. But I've kind of yeah. felt myself dipping, and I kind of can see some of the connection of you know not having the purpose to like get up and leave the house in um, in the same way you do when you're out working. And um, in lockdown, some of that was coming back. And um, so for me, it was it was acknowledging those signs yeah. and um, knowing how that impacts me. So yeah. I was feeling the fatigue and the tiredness again. So I kind of started making the small changes of how yeah. I could, um, you know, get out of that. And actually yeah. one of the things that was coming back again was like feelings of overwhelm, like yeah. actually trying to do it all. Um, yeah. And I found that very much with the, when I had postnatal depression, I was like that feeling of overwhelm and things like the laundry and it would just be in this never ending cycle. And when you're home with a toddler, it's a never ending cycle <laughs> and you're trying to work and, you know, you've got, every, you've got all the additional worry of, you know, what's happening in the world. Yeah. Um, so it was about, for me, it was about making the small steps and kind of letting go yeah. of all the expectations that, is okay if the laundry is piled up and um exactly. small changes were things like okay we can we, we are allowed to go for walks so actually let's go out for regular family walks which yeah. we've not done for a couple of weeks but um but actually when i was feeling that dip was us yeah. doing made a huge difference yeah um and i think i think uh get, making sure i get the vitamin d um because that's something i can suffer from so yes yeah when it comes out just making sure I do get out there more um for me a big part of it as well is making sure I feel connected so I think again that was the whole thing I think that was part of the um why I felt low with the postnatal was that yes I I could go out and um see people but it was more of a challenge to get out yeah. but it was also when you were seeing people you were I was always worried about you know uh, my little one or I couldn't like have a proper conversation yeah. um so for me it's been really important that I build in that connection um making sure that you know I'm talking to people in my life um that are important and and building connection with um you know my communities online has yeah. been really powerful and making sure that you know even though we can't see people in the same way yeah still having these conversations and actually that's been a great thing about the walks is suddenly 
you know I know my neighbors a lot better than I ever did before yeah <laughs> that's been a great benefit as well so I think for me well-being is all those parts and kind of it's about trying to find that balance um and I think another thing um which again was being impacted in the lockdown was I'm quite a thinker and I kind of need time for myself and time and space and I was really kind of struggling with you know everybody being home um you know and still trying to work and actually if ever I had time I was like well no I need to be working and then I'd get you know a dozen interruptions yeah. and uh, I was like I've got no time and space to think yeah but over, over the period it's got I realized again that's really important to me so yeah. finding that me and alone time even yeah. in pocket of time yeah has just been really important to my well-being yeah yeah so if you could pick one thing what would you say has helped you the most with your well-being um i think the one thing would be the awareness just that awareness of when you're kind of letting things glide and, yeah. um, so that you can then take action before you kind of had a full full dip yeah. and it's then really even yeah. harder yeah so i think that awareness that checking in with yourself on how yeah. you're actually doing yeah yeah i'd agree massively mm. um because i think you know sometimes um you, you know you have this vision where you, know, you, you, you feel like you're quite in in terms of you know you've you know you've not necessarily suffered with anything like this before mm. so, you know, so you just keep going and going um yeah. and sometimes that you get to a point where your self-awareness around it because you've not had to deal with it in the same way that some people who have suffered maybe earlier in life, mm. um it's it's kind of you you haven't got that same awareness you, you, you're not too dim with your warning time so you know so it is really important isn't it to kind of have that almost temperature check or self-awareness of yourself okay so um do you have one well-being tip um that you could share um for us in the current crisis yeah um i think it is about taking um small steps so if there is something that you're feeling quite overwhelmed with um like there is so much you know negative news in the world um i mean and there is positive stuff happening as well but it, it can be easy to be consumed by you know all the bad things and the anxiety and the worry so yeah. i think a like, small step in looking at what you can control yeah. and that might be you know how how much time you're spending on social media or how you're getting your news um so I, I know for one, I've kind of limited my news intake because it was becoming overwhelming. So, yeah. so it's, um, I think it's just, I think it's that it's looking at, you know, the things that you can control. So, you yeah. know, we have lots of things outside of our control right now, but there are things that we can do. So if that's getting out for a walk, getting out for fresh air, yeah. seeing how you can, you know, socially distance, distantly still connect with people, but yeah. focus on what you can do i guess rather than what you can't do right now yeah it's very empowering isn't it to focus on things that you can control mm. um yeah and it's it's in terms of you know those sort of feelings of, of um that you're being bombarded being bombarded with negativity you know yeah. that is that's that's normal you know our body's in a state where you know it's we're, we're in a stress state we're looking out for threats at the moment mm. so it's going to pick up on more and more of the negative things that are around so if you have to find ways to protect your mind which i know we've talked about because i did mm. a session for your yeah. group didn't i and we talked about protecting your mind yeah. um so it's really, really, um, it's really important to, you know, really think about actually, you know, what are those negative, what are the things that are negative to you and, and what can you, almost how can you, not necessarily put yourself in a bubble, but how can you um, control that to a certain extent and, and support and, and look after your mind, you know, just like you'd look after your baby or, you know, look after a family member, um, you know, often do we look after our mind in the same way so is there anything else that you'd like to add 
that you think would help anyone? Um, I think it's just really important to have these conversations and um, and not feel, you know, start breaking the stigma around mental health because we all do have mental health that we need to look after we do all have well-being that we need to look after and some of us might have um mental health conditions or yeah. challenges but actually having these conversations is just so important and something that yes we had mental health awareness week last week and there was a lot more conversations happening about this yeah. Um, and I realised that by sharing, it really it can really help others because they feel less alone. Yeah. Um, you've got to do what's right for you. But I think absolutely these conversations are so important. And the work you've you've done last week um, of raising the awareness with you know with all of the interviews that you've been having has been so powerful. And it's carrying on that work, which I know yeah. you do amazingly all through the year. So it's. Um, so I think, yeah, I just think it's amazing the work that you do, and um, and um, I know I remember that conversation that you told us about with your with your child when she said that you save lives, and that's really always stuck with me, like the work you do because it is talking about mental health awareness and helping people with their well being is saving lives. So, really a huge thank you for the work that you do. And, uh, <laughs> Don't um, even make me cry. <laughs> it is really compliments. It me cry when, you, when I heard your child say that um, <laughs> about you. But it is just so important. And I think that's a good reminder to all of us that it's not a stigma to talk about these things. And um, let's keep talking about them all through the year. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I'm very passionate about that part. Um, mm -hmm. you know, mental health awareness week isn't just a tick box yeah. exercise and unfortunately for um you know a number of organizations historically that's been what it is they've mm. raised a profile within that week and then not kind of looked at how they can really embed that into their culture throughout the year mm. um because they've potentially been really scared about almost like that bottle of pop is like mm. you shake it up and then you take the lid off what might come out mm. um, and i think that there's a big difference between um, us talking about mental health and talking about well-being and this is why mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about the difference between mental health and well-being and that when I'm training um, and coaching people around mental health it's not just about mental health awareness it's about well-being awareness because the well-being part is what you can change and what you can control yourself yeah. No, and then when I went through a really hard time, it's what I used to fix me. Um, you know, that's that's you know, and not everybody can do that. Other people need, you know, support from, um, you know, from the GP or you know. But yeah, it it can make it literally can transform lives when you look at actually how you're living your life and what balance do you need to put into your life to, you know, to to support you and your mind and that, mm. that big thing right well thank you ever so much i have loved this interview um as i always do love talking to you anita she's like, a very well. very passionate lady uh, <laughs> who does great work um so if you are a project manager then just get get into get in touch with anita she's got a great group that she's mm. women that she works with. so um thank you ever so much and um, I will see you very soon. Thank you, Emma. Bye. Bye.